Hey guys, I'm Bella, the Maker Mama Boss Lady behind Fiber and Fox, and I'm here today with a pattern drop. I have a new pattern, um, and I'm here to tell you about it. Full disclosure, because I know some people get bothered by it. This is not a free pattern video. This is a video talking about a pattern I've just released. So if you're into that sort of thing, stick around. Um, I'm normally a podcaster, and I talk about knitting and crochet. I'm a crochet. I know how to say that word, crochet designer. Um, but anytime I release a new pattern, I share a little info about the inspiration and tools and things that you're gonna need to know to make it and tester photos and fun stuff like that. So if you like that sort of thing, welcome to my pattern drop. Let's get started. So today uh, we are talking about the Dandelion Days Cowl and I'm excited about this one for, I mean, I'm excited about any new pattern. I'm excited about it for a couple of reasons. First off, it's the first pattern that I've released after being back. Um, maternity to leave or whatever you want to call it uh, after the birth of my son. This is the first pattern I've pulled myself together <laughs> and actually written up, tested and tech edited and released and all that. So that just feels like an accomplishment. But it's also my 30th pattern in all of my collection, which feels like a small number, but also like a really huge number. 30 is a lot of patterns. Um, I've been pattern designing since 2018. So we'll be going on five years. Uh, and yeah, 30 patterns is a bunch. So I'm proud of that. And this is also the fifth pattern in my dandelion stitch collection, I believe. Um, so I wanted to share it with you. So I'm going to pull it off the mannequin here. I just had it in the back just for a sneak peek, but I'll pull it off the mannequin and talk to you all about it. So we'll do a little close up here. This is a dandelion stitch pattern. It's uh, what I call my modified version of daisy or star stitch. And this is the dandelion days cowl. Uh, it looks kind of odd, not on, but on. This is one of my favorite designs for a cowl, it's, I think, technically called a pidge scarf or something like that is the technical term for this, like, wraparound button scarf situation, but I call it a cowl because no one is searching for pidge scarves. Um, I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong on that name. But this is how you wear it. Yes, yes. Uh, and what I love about these is that they stay in place. Sometimes shawls or cowls can feel like a little fiddly and if you're not used to wearing them or if you have a baby pulling on them all the time, it can feel very daunting to keep the shawl, you know, just right and have the ends to end not have it falling. This stays in place. Like it's not going anywhere because it's around you. Uh, and the buttons are just there to look pretty. It's actually fully fastened and attached like this. Um, the buttons are just sewn on top. So you're not only not going to have to worry about doing buttonholes, but you don't have to unbutton it or anything to take it on and off. It's just for looks. So it's a really nice, easy layering piece. And this is one, um, I have another pattern of a similar construction in a different stitch pattern called the There and Back Again Cowl. It's also in my shops so if you want to check it out. Um, and by the way, I should say everything is linked down below this video. The pattern, my shop, my Instagram, newsletter, anything you need to know, linked below the video. Um, but yes, the There and Back Again cowl is a very similar um, construction to this one. And it's been one of my most popular patterns at markets when I sold still um, at farmers markets, artisan markets, craft shows, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that was always a really, really popular one because it wasn't something that people had really seen in stores. Um, and it's very distinct. And they're like, oh, is that a poncho? Is that... So it was always fun to talk about and have on a mannequin and show people how to wear it and how easy it was to take on and off. And it wasn't intimidating like a shawl. So if you are somebody that makes to sell, this might be a good option. Um, but yeah, I, I usually talk about the inspiration behind a pattern. First off, this doesn't have a huge backstory. Some of my patterns have like a Bible verse or like this moment of inspiration or something behind it. This is just, I really like the dandelion stitch. I had this yarn and knowing that my there and back again cowl was not only an easy make, um, but a really nice statement piece that people have loved at markets. And I have loved to gift it as well to people. Cause it, again, it's just really easy to wear and is very just unique. Um, not in like, Oh, you made that kind of way, but like, Oh, that, has like a really luxurious handmade artisan look to it. So that <laughs> uh, is kind of the inspiration. I just love this stitch pattern. I love mustard yellow, obviously. It's, um, it's my fave, but I just think this is just such a beautiful stitch. And I'm usually, if you're familiar, familiar words, familiar with my design, somebody that designs mainly in um, fingering weight sport weight, maybe DK if I'm feeling crazy, yarns. I am not a bulky weight pattern kind of person. Back when I did markets, I did it more commonly because again, it's easier to whip up stuff faster. But now that I'm making just for myself and for the sake of pattern writing, I really like 
lightweight drapey things. But let's talk about the yarn on this because uh, it's obviously not lightweight. It's still kind of drapey, but not lightweight at all. Um, so this is actually made in a five or bulky weight yarn. Uh, the tricky bit uh, is that I actually made this out of yarn that I resalvaged off of a store made item. Um, so I had an infinity scarf actually that I think was actually like from Forever 21 or something that someone had gifted me. And I always feel weird about um, wearing things that I haven't made that look like I've made it. Cause people are like, oh, you just assume that I made it. Um, so I felt weird about that. So <laughs> after not wearing it a lot, I frogged it out because I really like the yellow yarn. So I pulled it back um, and I had to do some math and measuring and weighing and stuff to figure out approximate yardage and weight and all of that. Um, but in the pattern, there are suggestions for yarn that my testers use um, and some other yarns that I was able to meet gauge with. But you're basically gonna be looking for a five or bulky weight yarn. Um, some testers did try out um, super bulky, which is like six. And you might be able to meet gauge, but it's gonna create a very dense fabric. Um, the dandelion stitch is pretty dense already to begin with. Um, but if you want to try a super bulky, you can. And some testers also messed around with holding worsted weight double. Um, but overall, I would say it's a, it's a bulky weight. But because it's only, a, only, it's, only, it's very significant, but because it's only a, a cowl, it's not super important to fit. Um, I would still recommend doing a gauge and there is a gauge uh, given in the pattern, gauge swatch, but um, it's not super crucial that you have like the perfect fit, like a garment or whatever. Uh, so if you get the stitch down and you have a yarn that you really like and maybe you're not exactly on gauge, that's fine. Um, it's easy enough to adjust and add another couple rows or something. So overall, it's a very simple construction. The stitch itself, um, I've used in many other patterns and my tech editor has recommended that we label it as an intermediate stitch, intermediate level crochet. Um, just because it's not difficult, but unusual. It takes a little bit just to get it down, but after I'd say probably about four rows, you're gonna be a pro. And it's the only stitch that's used throughout the pattern other than basic, you know, chaining at the beginning and a uh, single crochet at the end kind of thing. But yeah, once you get it down, it's very, very repetitive and there's no shaping or anything to creating this. So you're not gonna have to do any decreasing, increasing or anything fancy. It's very simple. It's essentially making a scarf. Um, so once you get the stitch down, you're good to go. And while it is a more unique stitch, there is a full video tutorial linked in the pattern as well. Um, that's also on my channel if you want to check out the dandelion stitch. Uh, and there's also a photo tutorial step by step of how to do the stitch in the pattern. And then the only other thing that might be new or considered not tricky, but just maybe you haven't done it before, but there is a photo tutorial as well on how to do the the fringe or the tassels. And you could totally leave that out if that's not your thin thing. Um, the scarf, the cowl would still be beautiful without it, but I feel like it really finishes it off and gives it just again, that luxury vibe. Um, and you'll probably have leftover yarn either way. So it's nice. And the buttons again, optional cause they're just sitting on top. I have some pretty wood ones on there, um, but you totally don't need to add the buttons. I think one of my testers skipped the buttons and it still looks very pretty without, but I think it makes it nice and polished to just sew some sorts of buttons on there. And it's funny too, back when I was doing the there and back again cowl for markets, even if I had the same cowl, like four gray cowls, exactly the same yarn, if I switched out the buttons on them, people were like, ooh, which buttons do I want? So I feel like the buttons really make it. Um, I'm gonna put it back on just for the rest of the video because I feel like you should see it. Hopefully I didn't mess up my hair too much, but see, it's just so easy to put on. Yep, I messed up my hair. <laughs> it's all right, we're fine. It's a lovely, um, piece to have underneath a coat in like the cold cold because you can bunch it up and this is nice and thick and cozy so you can almost like turtleneck it around your neck and then zip your coat up uh, but I also really like it in like the spring and fall as a it's a little brisk outside but not um, bulky cold bulk, ugh, bulky coat bulky sweater weather kind of situation so overall other than in the dead of summer I think it's a great layering piece depending on where you live obviously but where I'm at I wear this one a lot and again particularly with a baby. Um, it's just so much easier to wear this than it is a shawl that requires wrapping and zhuzhing. So that's that's the dandelion days cowl. There's nothing too complicated about it. Uh, I will put some tester photos in for you. It was just a small tester group because this is, like I said, a very straightforward project. So even if you're not a very experienced crocheter, if you're able to follow a video tutorial, good with a picture tutorial, there is obviously full written instructions as well. 
um, you should be pretty good to go on this one. Maybe not your first ever project, but if you're familiar with crochet. And I'm always there. If you have questions, you can always contact me, uh, Bella at fiberandvox.com. I'm happy to answer questions, but I think, I think this one should be pretty easy for you. But that being said, like everyone's their own level of crochet. <laughs> I have such a hard time putting levels on things because people are either like, eh, that was actually super easy or, eh, she said it was easy and it wasn't, but you can do it. It's doable. Uh, if you're familiar with crochet patterns. <laughs> so I hope that this uh, gives you a little bit of inspiration. And like I said, it's pretty straightforward, so I can't go on and on about it. But I am in love with the dandelion stitch and I won't stop designing things with it. And this is a quick, very gratifying project because it's much thicker yarn and goes really fast once you get it down. Probably, I mean, maybe not this. I was going to say it takes just about as long to make the tassels as it does the, the scarf, but not really. <laughs> it probably still takes longer to crochet, but it's pretty. You can do it in a couple days at most. And again, great for gifting, great for markets, just great for yourself. So if you have any questions, you can leave them down below. I would love to know um, what colors you're thinking, button combos, all of that. And I can't wait for you to tag me uh, in your makes. You can do so by tagging me on Instagram, uh, fiber.and.fox. And you can use the hashtag dandelion days and it's days like days and wonder, not days like of the week, days cowl, dandelion days cowl. And I am excited to see yours. Thanks for hanging out with me for another pattern drop and supporting fiber and Fox. Even if you just watch the video and don't get the pattern, I still super, 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 super appreciate you guys being here and watching through these things and taking time to, comment and like and all of that. It makes a huge difference. And I promise there'll be more dandelion pan. <laughs> I can't talk. And I promise there will be more dandelion patterns in the future. And I think we made it through the video without my son crying. It's always iffy these days if you're following my channel. Great reminder to subscribe. Thanks for being here guys. And I'm looking forward to seeing your cows. I will talk to you soon.